In farming, the scale and sophistication of the outputs will depend on two factors. One, labor, and two, the scale and sophistication of the key inputs, seeds, crop protection products, fertilizers, and machinery. In pre-industrial farming, the inputs were simpler. Seeds came from the previous season's plants. Equipment was basic, hose and ox-drawn plows. Nutrients came from compost or manure, water from basic irrigation systems. These simple inputs meant high labor intensity and unpredictable outputs. Today, the equation has flipped. The so-called input intensity is very high and labor intensity is very low. The outputs, of course, are far more reliable, nutrient-dense, and high volume. Achieving this consistently starts at the very top of the agricultural value chain with the inputs. Today, the farm input sector is a $500 billion industry in its own right. Farm inputs can be thought of as falling into four groups, seeds, fertilizers, crop protection products like pesticides, and equipment or machinery like tractors. Seeds are really the foundation. A good harvest starts with good seeds. And not all seeds are the same. Even within the same crop species, there is generally a wide variation. Seeds can be either farm-saved, also called conventional seeds, or they can be hybridized. Farm-saved seeds are pollinated naturally by the wind and insects. With each new seed, a unique, random new individual set of DNA. Basically, rolling the genetic dice for the next year. Hybridization means controlled pollination. Basically, an arranged marriage. Hybridizers select and breed for specific traits, like drought resistance and overall yield. By hybridizing generation after generation, seed companies have removed a lot of the chance. There is a second way input companies have removed chance and added value for growers. Genetic modification. Genetic modification means directly altering the plant's DNA, generally to insert additional characteristics, primarily either herbicide tolerance, so you can use chemicals without harming the plant, or insect resistance, so you can use fewer insecticides. These traits would be much harder or impossible to achieve via hybridization alone. Genetic modification is a distinct technology from hybridization. Seeds with genetically modified traits can also be farm-saved, as is the case in soy farming, or used for hybridization, as is the case in corn farming. We will discuss the seed sector more in the next chapter. Let's turn now to another critical set of inputs, crop protection products. There are three main groups here, based on the three main threats to plants. Herbicides, which protect against weeds that would otherwise compete with crops for sunlight, nutrients, and water. Fungicides, which protect against fungal diseases like mold. And insecticides, which protect against insects that chew the crop or spread plant diseases. The chemistry behind these products is often complex, in part because the specific crop protection product often depends on the type of seed being used. Solutions for the seeds and the crop protection product often work hand in hand. Crop protection is typically customized for specific crops. Both inputs are often purchased together accordingly. Companies therefore often integrate horizontally across these segments, for instance, selling both seeds and crop protection products. Together, seeds and crop protection are the most profitable inputs, and they attract the most effort and attention as well. Over 60% of R&D investment is concentrated on these two segments. The third segment is fertilizer, which is a different business altogether. It's much more commoditized. Commercial synthetic fertilizers are primarily a blend of three elements, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the so-called NPK formulation. The nitrogen, the N, often comes in the form of ammonia, a relatively low-cost molecule produced from fossil fuels like natural gas. The P and K, phosphorus and potassium respectively, generally come from mining outputs, like potash, which is a mined, potassium-containing salt. Fertilizers are usually distinguished as either premixed or formulated. Premixed fertilizers come ready to use in fixed NPK ratios. Formulated fertilizers mean that the producers customize the solution with specific qualities, say for better absorption, so as to avoid being washed away with runoff during a rainstorm. Fertilizers, even formulated products, are largely commoditized and are lower in value than seeds and crop protection products. Margins are slim and R&D investment is only about 1% of that in seed and crop protection combined. Efficiency and scale in production are key. Players are typically located in regions with low-cost energy sources, like Russia, or with easy access to mining resources, like the potash mines in Canada. Prices will fluctuate according to market demand, as well as the costs of material inputs 
and manufacturing costs. For example, ammonia production is energy intensive, and so ammonia costs will often track with the energy costs. Finally, let's talk machinery, the last key input segment. Mechanization is, in many ways, a defining feature of modern agriculture. Key machine inputs include tractors, combines, which are machines used for harvesting, sprayers, and irrigation systems. Advanced technologies like GPS and image recognition are increasingly relevant as well. Equipment can be programmed to follow an exact path, to plant seeds at variable spacing, to fertilize specific areas according to a map, or even to recognize the difference between a weed and a crop and apply herbicide in a targeted way. There is a spectrum of farm equipment OEMs, like John Deere and Case New Holland, or CNH, that make and sell farm machinery. This sector is largely beyond the scope of this primer. In the following chapters, we will examine two of the key input segments in greater detail, seeds and crop protection.